Hey everybody, welcome back to Better Computer. My name is Matt, and the Opal C1 is a relatively new webcam out there that I'm shooting this video on right now, and it's a pretty cool webcam. I did a whole other review of it, so I'll leave a link in the description and up here somewhere. But today I wanted to take a look at the software you can get to run this webcam. Now you don't need to run any software at all. If you just wanna plug it into your Mac or Windows computer and use it as a webcam, it totally works. But there's some additional functionality you can unlock with the software. So we're just gonna take a look at it today so you have an idea for what it does and how much improvement it brings to the camera uh, just from its default experience. So I've got the app up here, it runs in the menu bar, um, but I can actually just drag it and detach it. So here's uh, the app running on my Mac, and I basically have one setting going right now, and it's the fake bokeh. Uh, so you may have noticed this, you may have not, um, but I can turn this off, and that turns it off, and you just get the standard look for uh, the camera. You can turn it on, and I think it looks pretty nice. Um, you can go this extreme with it, or you can go really subtle with it, and you can kind of just pick whatever works for you. I kind of like it around this range, which is subtle, but still looks pretty decent. Um, you can throw the logo on there, which I don't know why you would do that unless you're an Opal employee, but that's fine. Um, I can turn the video off, which I'm not going to do because that might mess with my recording, but you can just turn the video off from here. Uh, you can turn on zoom. So if you want to zoom in on part of the picture, you can do that up to two and a half times. So if you're sitting like way far away, you could frame it however you want. Um, so that's not a thing that I personally use, but it's a thing you can use. And then they have face lock, which is kind of like Apple's center stage. So it's going to lock onto my face. And if I move, it's going to follow me around. And it's a little robotic and you can see it kind of gives up sometimes. It's definitely not as good as center stage, um, but it's an option there. And if you just like stay in one spot, I think it does a good job of keeping you centered. Um, and you can change how much this zooms in. So you can zoom in a ton or you can just zoom in a little bit, um, but yeah. That's there. I don't think it's great. I hope this improves in the beta process, but yeah, it can lock onto your face. And if you do small movements, it's pretty good, but it's not going to be as much as Apple gives you uh, with center stage. So we're going to leave kind of these right here. Now, audio, in theory, the microphone that's built into here, which I'm not going to test in this video, again, check the review for all of that. You have some options to mute it, to do noise cancellation, to do studio sound. I have no idea how well these work because they're grayed out and there's no way for me to access them for some reason. So I have no idea. So we'll move on to effects. Effects are some of the things that I personally don't use, but some other people may get value from. Uh, if I turn on filters, these are really much, very much like Instagram filters. So you can just kind of choose which one of these you want. Um, I mean, they're all fine. They're just not really my style. Uh, so you can choose like how, yikes, uh, how aggressive to be with them. Um, honestly, I really don't think you need these. I think that they make things look kind of weird and like 2010 Instagram, which isn't great. Um, you can do touch-ups. So this will touch up your face and remove blemishes and you can really go super, super soft if you want. Um, I know a lot of people like this with things like Zoom. I don't personally use it, but you can use that if you'd like. So there's nothing and there's with some touch up, there's a lot of touch up. So, you know, there you go. Take that for what it is. Um, I haven't shaved in a couple of days, so I'm really <laughs> making the touch up feature work hard. Uh, tone sync, I actually don't entirely know what this is. It looks like it's changing the tone a little bit. It's almost saturating more. Um, honestly, I'm not sure what this feature does. Uh, I will try to leave a comment if I can find out what it does after this, but I haven't played with this before. It makes it a little warmer almost. Maybe it's uh, making it more, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not totally sure what Tone Sync does. I don't use it. Um, and Pixelate is just a pixel filter. So you can make it slightly pixelated or way pixelated if you want to keep your identity secret, I guess, <laughs> is the way to do it. Um, but yeah, if you have a use case for this, you will know immediately. Otherwise, I'm not sure you would want to use this, uh, especially since the whole point of getting a camera like this is to have really great uh, video quality. Pixel 8 is like the opposite. So, you know, if you need it, you need it, uh, but not for me. So I don't really use anything on this page either. You'll notice so far the only feature I'm using is the fake bokeh. Um, but yeah, then there are some manual controls and we actually have to move it up because there's quite a few of these. Uh, focus lock. So if you want to lock the focus, this does have autofocus. Uh, so if I bring the focus as close as possible, you can see I'm slightly out of focus. I can move myself back in focus and it'll just lock here. So if I go back, I'm slightly out of focus and I come back into it, or I can kind of go all the way back. Um, and you know, you can kind of just play around and figure out 
what's right for you. But um, in general, I would suggest the autofocus works great. Um, but if it doesn't lock on to you, like it's somehow not locking on right now, I don't think. Strange. Um, so yeah, this is one of the things I talk about in the review. The autofocus isn't totally perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, brightness, you can just change that. So that's if you wanna boost it, I think uh, 50 is the default or no? Yeah, you can kind of just tweak this um, however you'd like. And I'm really kind of screwing with the focus right now. Um, yeah, this is one of the issues with this app is that it's kind of buggy at the moment. So I'm actually just going to try and lock the focus so I don't have to worry about that going crazy. Um, exposure, it's auto by default, or you can boost it if you think it's underexposing or dim it if you think it's overexposing. Again, I think auto is generally fine. Uh, saturation, uh, you can boost that if you'd like. Don't go crazy with it, but you can boost it a little bit if you need. Uh, again, I think auto is fine. Contrast, I mean, these are just basic controls. Um, contrast, you can boost a little bit. Vibrance, similar to saturation. And again, yikes, you can really go crazy with it. And then white, <clears throat> excuse me, white balance. Uh, you can go ahead and just tweak the white balance if it's not quite right. I think that personally, I do sometimes change this because sometimes it does feel like it's too cool to me. It defaults to too cool. Um, and then I just warm it up a little bit. But yeah, it kind of whatever works for you. Um, and then settings, uh, this is it. Uh, we're actually near the end of the video. There's not that much to it. Um, you can choose when to launch the app. So you can launch it at login or whenever you plug in the camera. I have both those turned off because I actually use it without the app a lot of the time um, just because there's co some compatibility issues. Um, sometimes Google Meet and Zoom, for example, won't see the camera as an option if the app is running. But as soon as I quit the app, it's suddenly available and I can just use it. So weird. Um, hopefully that'll be ironed out soon. But uh, yeah, this is probably the one you want is when you plug in the camera, just uh, launch the app so that all these things can start running. Um, and yeah, that's really it. You can mirror the video. So if you want to kind of just mirror it so you can see what you're used to seeing, you can change the quality up to 4K, which I'm not gonna do now because it'll reset the feed. Um, but honestly, the video quality looks basically the same at 1080 and 4K to my eyes, in my opinion. But again, check out the full review for that. Um, there's some shortcuts that you can do, um, but again, these are grayed out. Gesture controls, these are grayed out as well. There's like, um, yeah, toggle face lock with a click. Toggle video on with a on off with a peace sign, I guess, is a thing you'll be able to do, but can't do those yet. And then they have updates. So you can see I'm talking about version 0.16.1 public beta. So um, maybe there'll be a new version out when you're watching this video, but this is what I'm reviewing or kind of looking at in April of 2022. But yeah, that is it. Uh, that's a quick view, review of the, not a review, just an overview of the uh, software that comes with the Opal C1. Again, you don't need to use this if you don't want to. Uh, you can just plug it in, install zero third-party software, and it just works as a dumb webcam, and it w works as a pretty darn good one. Uh, but yeah, if you wanted to get those extra features, this is what the app offers, and hopefully this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.